Good day grade 12s, my name is Viola from the Distinction Bound Student and I'd like to welcome you to Lesson 96 from the Distinction Bound Student Textbook written by Cardin Madzokir. Today's lesson is yet another possible essay and good news again is that Cardin gave us yet another mnemonic to help us in the exam. So stay tuned and let us help you get a distinction. As usual, we kickstart our lesson by revising homework activity 84 given in Lesson 95. Question 1. Briefly discuss the uses of per capita figures. 8 marks. Remember we always tell you that 8 marks means at least 4 points. Per capita figures indicate economic development in a country. When countries take necessary measures to increase per capita figures, standards of living in those countries increase. Per capita figures can be used to compare living standards within a country. It is customary to compare living standards of countries in terms of per capita GNI. Figures for comparison are converted to the U.S. dollars. Indicate living standards. It expresses the income accruing to the residents of a country irrespective of geographical boundaries. That's it for our homework. Let's get into the lesson. Today's lesson takes us to Unit 3, Social Indicators which is a possible essay. Social indicators are statistics that measure the level of social development and human welfare within a country. There are six social indicators. The mnemonic that Cardin came up with for social indicators is, DIHUN. D stands for demographic indicators. I stands for income indicators. E stands for education indicators. H stands for housing indicators. U stands for urbanization indicators. N stands for nutrition indicators. We will kickstart with demographic indicators from which we will discuss population growth and life expectancy. Demographics refers to the statistical data that describes the characteristics of a population, such as age, gender, race, income, education level, and more. Look at this example here. We can see household income, gender, employment, education, and so on. We will start with population growth. Measuring of population growth is done through conducting a census. Look here where it says 2022 census, hashtag get counted. We need to know the population of the country for service delivery purposes and also to establish a tax base. South Africa has a relatively high population growth rate compared with developed countries. A high population growth coupled with low economic growth harms efforts to improve the average standard of living of the population. It also places great pressure on government finances in terms of providing social services. Next we will look at life expectancy. It is the number of years a newborn infant is expected to live. Life expectancy is higher in developed countries than it is in developing countries. Look at this world map on life expectancy. Do you see that life expectancy is lowest in Southern Africa? Look how high it is in Canada, Europe, Australia and New Zealand. A lot of diseases claim our lives and we don't have adequate infrastructure to fight those diseases. Let's jump over to income distribution indicators. Under this we will cover head count index and the Gini coefficient. Head count index is a simple measure used to assess poverty. It represents the proportion of the population living below the poverty line, typically defined by a certain income threshold or basic needs. Let us have a look at this map. Look at Africa, India and other areas with percentage of people living on less than $1.90 a day. The World Bank states that everyone living on less than a 1 US dollar and 90 cents a day is living below the poverty datum line. Poverty headcount ratio at national poverty line, percent of population, in South Africa was reported at 22 in 2008, according to the World Bank. Next is the Gini coefficient. This is a measure of income inequality within a population. It is a number between 0 and 1, where 0 represents perfect equality, everyone has the same income and one represents perfect inequality, one person has all the income. Progressive income taxing and BEE are methods used to lower the Gini coefficient. In SA, the Gini coefficient was 0.65 in 2023 and in the US it was at 0.41 in the same year. Next is education under which we will explore literacy rate. Literacy rate, a higher ratio of literacy, knowledge and skills among the population is necessary. This can be achieved by means of effective and appropriate education and training. This will ultimately lead to increased productivity, competitiveness, national wealth and a higher standard of living per capita of the population. Spending on education makes up the largest percentage of total government expenditure in South Africa and is clearly a priority. In August 2015 literacy rate was at 92.9% in South Africa and today, 
July 25, 2023 it sits at 95.2%, which indicates that more and more people are becoming able to read and write. We will now look at housing and services. Housing, a significant proportion of South Africans are poor and cannot afford to buy residential property. The government facilitates home ownership by means of a subsidy system and loans from the private sector. Factors hindering housing delivering and home ownership in South Africa include high levels of unemployment and a very skew income distribution. Up next is services. The General Household Survey was developed to measure the level of development and performance of various government programs and projects. One of the purposes of the GHS is to measure development indicators in the country e.g. access to basic services such as piped water, electricity, and refuse removal. A number of services are vital to enhance people's lifestyles namely. Electricity, increased from 50% in 1995. Refuse disposal, households in SA has access to refuse removal by local authorities once a week. Water supply, some 86% of households had access to clean water in 2004. Sanitation, some 57.1% of households in SA had access to flush or chemical facilities in 2004. Let us move on with our lesson. We will now look at urbanization. Let us have a look at this world map. Do you see that Africa is the least urbanist continent and North America is the highest urbanist continent in the, the world? Let us further break it down. Did you know that there are countries that are 100% urbanist? It means that those countries like Singapore, Nauru, Monaco, Vatican City and Qatar have no rural areas at all. Africa has many people living in rural areas as you can see here. Urbanization can be described as a worldwide process of transformation whereby communities change from a rural to an urban place of residence. Urban areas are usually faster growing and are normal feature of economic development. More employment opportunities exists, higher wages and other perceptions of a better life in cities. Urbanization points out to governments and developers that land has to be provided for a variety of purposes and services. We will conclude with nutrition and health indicators under which we will cover infant mortality, under 5 mortality, health expenditure, access to sanitation, child malnutrition and overweight children. We will start with infant mortality. It is measured in terms of number of infants who die before reaching one year of age per thousand live births in a given year. SA's infant mortality rate, 2010, 35, 2011, 34, 2012, 34, 2013, 33, per 1,000 live births. It is sad that Cardin lost his daughter Kayleen Jada Madzokir. May her soul continue to rest in peace. Next is under 5 mortality. It is measured in terms of probability that a newborn baby will die before reaching the age of 5 years if subject to present age-specific mortality rates. Probability expressed as number per thousand. Essays under 5 mortality rate, 2010, 53, 2011, 48, 2012, 45, 2013, 44, per 1,000 live births. Next we will look at health expenditure. It is measured in terms of amount of public and private health expenditure on health care as percentage of GDP. In 2001 SA's expenditure was 8.6% compared to 108 in high-income countries. We will now look at access to safe drinking water. Measured in terms of percentage of population that has reasonable access to safe drinking water treated or uncontaminated. In 2002 87% of SA population had access compared to 64% in Africa. Up next is access to sanitation facilities. It is measured in terms of percentage of population with at least adequate sanitation facilities that can effectively prevent human, animal and insect contact. In 2002 67% of South African population had access to improved sanitation. It's an important indicator for the well-being of infants and young children. Two opposite nutrition conditions are relevant, i.e. child malnutrition and overweight children both important for children under 5 years of age. Another sad indicator is child malnutrition. It is expressed in two ways, weight for age, underweight, and height for age, stunting or dwarfism. Proportion of children underweight is most important indicator of malnutrition. Important to monitor weight because being underweight increases the risk of death and inhibits cognitive development in children. Lastly we will look at overweight children. 
Growing concern, there exists an association between obesity in childhood and high prevalence of diabetes, respiratory disease, high blood pressure and psychological and orthopedic disorders. Being overweight can lead to numerous adverse health conditions which affect people's ability to work and take care of themselves. As usual we conclude our lesson with homework activity 85 on page 207. Question 1. Why do you think the poor find it difficult to escape poverty? For marks. Question 2. Name any two indicators that forms part of the Human Development Index. For marks. This has brought us to the end of our lesson. Don't forget to like and subscribe to our channel. Also hit the notification bell for you to get notified every time we post new content to our channel. We are also giving away the Distinction Bound Student t-shirts to people who buy more than 10 books. At the moment we have the following textbooks, Economics Grade 10, 11 and 12 plus Business Studies Grades 11 and 12. We are looking forward to adding more books to our catalog. Remember our books come in two versions, Complete and No Answers versions. Complete versions have answers and No Answers versions do not. Thank you so much for your support. See you in the next video. God bless. Thank <laughs> you.